fruits. But Dr. Morton, I have to ask you, can one fruit just be a cure-all? No. Abby, I don't believe any fruit or herb or drug can be considered a cure-all. There's no such thing as a silver bullet when it comes to medicine. But in saying that, the mangosteen fruit has been used for numerous types of health conditions uh, in Southeast Asia, and centuries can't be, centuries of experience and use for health conditions cannot be wrong. Plus, I like what Dr. Templeman said, and that is science is now just catching up with what people have already known. So for the past few years, I keep collecting journal article upon journal article that has demonstrated uh, and has really demonstrated how the mangosteen fruit can work in inflammation in Billy's case or as an antibacterial agent or an antiviral agent or an antioxidant agent. And so even though I don't believe science has all of the answers, the one thing science can do is to help provide evidence about why a, in this case, the mangosteen fruit has been used and is continued to be used as an anti-inflammatory or an antibacterial agent. And science is showing that, yes, it does do that, and this is how the mangosteen is doing that. So even though it's no, there's no such thing as a cure-all, there's a lot to back up the mangosteen fruit in the properties that it does have. It has many, many yeah. uh, applications. Mm -hmm. Well, could you name three or four of the most important beneficial aspects of the mangosteen? Uh, some of the papers have demonstrated uh, antibacterial properties in, in helping to combat, uh, and then I should mention this too, Abby, these are done in, in vitro in a petri dish uh, for uh, uh, H. pylori salmonella, um, Staphylococcus, uh, Staphylococcus yeah. uh, Staph aureus, uh, and even up to the mycobacterium bacteria, which is TB. And in vitro has been demonstrated that the xanthones from the pericarp of the mangosteen fruit have been able to kill bacteria completely within a petri dish. And that's very important in dealing with bacteria because if you have any of the bacteria that survive, you now have bacteria that can then be uh, get a resistance to whatever agent you're using to kill them. And the mangosteen xanthones have killed them completely. Uh, other properties have demonstrated, as I mentioned before, antioxidants are extremely potent in dealing in preventative medicine, which is something that Western medicine does not really deal with that well. How can you prevent health problems like atherosclerosis? And antioxidants have been demonstrated to be very good in combating or preventing atherosclerosis. Mangosteen's fantastic for that. A science article that came out of of Australia a few years back demonstrated that in vitro using human blood cell lines. Um, and then I'd say the big one is anti-inflammatory. As Dr. Templeman had mentioned, the xanthones from the mangosteen pericarpet have been demonstrated to stop inflammation in, in animal models and in vitro models, and that has been going over for the past three decades, research and, continually doing that. And the xanthones have been compared to the medicines that I can write prescriptions mm -hmm. for. And literally, uh, I don't think there's a medicine that I can write a prescription for as an anti-inflammatory that would be more potent than the mangosteen xanthones. Well, Dr. Templeman, how can it also help, because I believe it can, patients who suffer from arthritis? Well, David has talked a little bit about the anti-inflammatory effect of this. And, and arthritis in its beginning stages is certainly heavily uh, based upon inflammation. Not only arthritis, but many other diseases. And when arthritis actually takes uh, control of a joint, and, and if we were talking about a rheumatoid arthritis, that's where the body has turned against the material of the joint. The immune system of the body has actually mistakenly believed that the material of the joint is foreign tissue, and so it attacks it, and it destroys it. And that is a pure inflammatory process. So that when you give uh, the mangosteen to people who have these problems, you get wonderful results. I had a, a golfer, a fellow who had uh, actually earned his living by being a golfer, a golf pro. And he had contracted a particularly aggressive form of rheumatoid arthritis, so much so that in a matter of months he was bedbound with a number of very hot, red and inflamed and painful joints that standard medication was not able to help at all. He eventually got to the point where he was using a very powerful drug that is sometimes used as a chemotherapy agent called methotrexate. But in fact, it's so toxic, it can only be used for a short period of time in any individual patient. Now, the methotrexate allowed him to get up and to walk around, and he could, in fact, golf a little. But he knew that he was coming to a time 
when the methotrexate could no longer be prescribed to him and he was desperate. I proposed the use of mangosteen and I was a little bit hesitant because we were putting it up against methotrexate. But interestingly enough, when he dovetailed his use of, me use of methotrexate with the mangosteen preparation, in a matter of three to four weeks, he was able to reduce his dosage and eventually stop the methotrexate, get out and be more pain-free than he ever had with any medication. So once again, in an arthritic case, and this is probably the most striking one, but I've heard of many stories since and had other patients the mangosteen works better than many medications. Now, you know, doctor, some cynics would say, well, that's kind of like the placebo effect. Well, it is like the placebo effect, but as Dr. Morton was explaining, we have a number of animal studies, particularly when we're examining inflammation. And the placebo effect is very difficult to sort out from an animal study because it isn't the same as human communication and particularly when you're talking about laboratory rats or guinea pigs. So while there is a possibility of placebo, but I'd point out that a placebo cure is a cure. So we don't need to necessarily fine, uh, you know, go with a fine tooth comb through every cure. A cure is a cure. And if it's from placebo, I'm not terribly worried as long as the patient is better. But this outstrips placebo. Placebo can be a maximum of 30%. This literally outstrips placebo. Many more people get better with this than could be explained with placebo. And I, I'd like to add to that too, Abby, is that even though usually science would go in an in vitro study in a petri dish and then from that to an animal model in an in vivo study and then to a human model, that's generally the, the progression that goes with, uh, with studying an herb or a medicine. Uh, you can't take a guinea pig and have a guinea pig pretend that the inflammation goes away. It just goes away. So even though you can't say because it worked in a guinea pig, it's going to work exactly the same way in a human being, if the inflammation goes away in a guinea pig or a rat, they didn't pretend it or fake it. It happened. And so that happens even though you can't say the placebo effect happened in an animal. Point well taken.